All right, welcome back to another After Dark, everybody. Hope you guys had a wonderful day, and hope you guys are having a good night so far, depending on what time it is. I know some of you, this is the morning, so this is awkward, but what are you going to do? <laughs> Anyways, um, I got another video here from Trice. Uh, I enjoyed that one last night so much about Michael Jordan on the Wizards that uh, this one popped up, and I realized I've never talked about... Uh, I, I've never talked about Jeremy Lin, and yeah, I'm due. I'm also due for talking about Yao Ming, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure to cover that soon as well. But for today, we're gonna cover a video called Knixed, uh, like K Nixed, like you've been nixed, and it's called What Killed Lin Sanity: A Hoops Investigation. This should be this should be pretty interesting because he kind of got blackballed, but I mean I'm not even gonna waste any time talking about it myself because i'm sure trice is going to get into it and we'll we'll talk about it while it's happening but he had a very interesting career you know he was like a like a crypto means meme stock because he just like skyrocketed to the moon and then crashed and burned so fast but there were other things at play that that contributed to him kind of disappearing but all right everybody let's check this out um as always I'm going to link the original Trice video down below in the description if you want to watch it without my commentary. Uh, for everybody else, please leave this video a like. I'd really appreciate it. It'll help this video take off. Um, and yeah, without further ado, let's do this. Jeremy Lin, and you're a pretty big ovation. We saw last night in Boston, Jeremy Lin was the first point guard off the bench. Played the first we all know the story. How an undrafted player from Palo Alto, California, took the world by storm when he led the New York Knicks on one of the most unexpected runs in sports history. The publicity was everywhere. Yep. A storyline that was covered from late night talk shows to news broadcasts across the globe. Everyone was talking about Jeremy Lin until the run stopped. Fingers have been pointed for over a decade now about why this magical, meteoric rise had to come to an end. Was it jealousy? Injuries? Maybe something as simple as an updated scouting report? Everyone has their opinion of what went wrong. But the question itself still remains. What killed Linsanity? I mean, right off the bat, it started with Carmelo Anthony, but a lot more happened down the line. What a time. New Yorkers, any New Yorkers in here? <laughs> Tell me what it was like. The first domino to fall in the collapse of Lin Sanity came on February 23rd, 2012. For the previous 11 games, Lynn had been at the height of the basketball world, averaging 24 points and 9 assists as the new starting point guard of the New York Knicks. The crowd on its feet here at the Air Canada Center. Lynn puts it up. Bang. <laughs> The team had gone 9-2 over this stretch, including a big win over Kobe and the Lakers in the Garden, but now found themselves traveling to South Beach for a matchup with the eventual NBA champion Miami Heat. The Heat had been on a revenge tour all season, motivated by a loss in the previous NBA Finals, and the Big Three was more than aware of the publicity that had been surrounding Jeremy Lin. He's done a great job. I think he's done a fantastic job. But, you know, with great success comes expectation and responsibility and, and stuff like that. Not to say that he can't do it, but you have to think what happens next. You know, one thing uh, I really enjoyed about Jeremy Lin was he was getting more attention I mean, this was, like, beyond Tim Tebow status. Like, this is beyond Tebow time. And very similar stories. If this was a football channel, I definitely would cover that as well. Um, but one thing I really liked about uh, Lynn was that they kept trying to give 
all, all the media ch- trying to push all the attention to him, but he just kept talking about the team. The team won. The team came together today. Yeah, he was just deflecting all of that attention. That showed a lot of maturity for a young kid. Oh, the steal by Chalmers. He's been all over. Amazon. Chalmers. Double, double team. Gets it inside. Oh, yeah. Oh, the steal is Blint had it. Yeah, so they got him out of his comfort zone with a, with a double team trap right at the top In of the key. what would be his worst performance since earning the starting spot, Lynn would be held to just eight points on one for 11 shooting from the field, a Oof. moment that seemed to dim the spotlight on the Knicks' magical run. I want to give a special thanks to Sleeper for sponsoring this project. The NBA season is heating up. All which right. means we got a... You have to do move past three point have the op they have an experience e r i pause it terms of come on while lynn would right, continue to put up respectable numbers sprinkling in some 20 point games following the all-star break the knicks themselves took a turn for the worst losing six in a row to start the month of march head coach mike d'antoni whose system of pick and roll action had been a major factor in Jeremy's success that season, would step down as head coach of the team on March 12th, citing frustrations with the team's underperformance as his reason for resigning. This led to- He a had a lot of problems with Carmelo Anthony as well, Coach D'Antoni, because that offense was supposed to be like a flow offense and Carmelo is more of a one-on-one -on -one player, um, like an ISO player and a post player, all good fundamental, uh, basketball offense stuff, but it doesn't flow in a Mike D'Antoni offense at all. Jeremy Lin did fit the role. <coughs> Pardon me. Excuse me. I mean, mind you, it's not a, he's no Steve Nash and, uh, you know, he was, wasn't as quick and nimble as, uh, and, as James Harden, but he fit the role pretty damn well of just move the ball, be fast. You know, if they play off of you, shoot the three. If not, play the pick and roll, dish the ball. Like, Lynn was playing the role very well. Assistant Mike Woodson being named the new interim coach, a man who had a very different mm -hmm. offensive philosophy from D'Antoni. Woodson was a firm believer in isolation scoring, yeah. limiting the number of pick and roll opportunities available for Lynn per game, a change that was welcomed by Knicks star Carmelo Anthony, yeah, perfect for who Mello. just so happened to be one of the best ISO scorers the game had ever seen. Anthony for three. Bang! That one goes down and the game is tied! You see, while Melo had been the Knicks star at the time of insanity, his absence to start the run had been a big reason for its success. And there has been wide speculation about how he truly felt about Jeremy Lin's rise to stardom in his city. It was some weird going on because obviously like we riding a wave. This is uh, Baron Davis, by the way. Super wave. Oh, yeah. sorry. It says and the insanity right wave is just, and mellow out. Remember, mellow he was out. injured when he yeah, when he went on that out. run. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He gone a run. We went like five, six in a row. Mm -hmm. But when mellow come back, Jeremy Lin is the biggest star in the, in the world. world. Yeah. In the world. Yeah. He's the. He has literally went yeah. from like nobody to the yeah. face of the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> it was like Melo came back and Jeremy Lin was so big. He was bigger than Melo, mm -hmm. oh, media yeah. wise. Yeah. And so it did create a little like, this is not real. Like we can't, we not, can't live this, in this. Is this sustainable or not? Yeah, yeah, bro, we can't live in this, right. but like we should be living in it. But I think like it started to create um, like tension in the, in, our, in the way we play. Can Lynn's sanity continue? I believe what so. What you've seen? I believe so. What I've seen, I mean, right now he's playing out of his mind, That's like right. completely out of his mind. He's, he's unbelievable right now. Um, you know, when I come back, I think I can take some of that off, some of that pressure off of him to have to go out there and do it on a consistent basis. 
If Carmelo Anthony is on the floor with Jeremy Lin, who's taking the last shot in that game? Of course I want to take the last shot. I mean, let's be quite frank. I mean, I, I've been doing it for nine years already, so I've made, made a ton of them. Man, how hard would it have been to just say, it depends on which co what, what, what Coach D'Antoni draws up. You know, how hard would have that been? I never knew then. I don't know now. I've never had a conversation about it personally with him. Um, but the only thing I, and I've said this, and it's, I don't say it just to like be fake, is I've never had a conflict with him personally. Yeah. Um, everything that happened, everything that you know is what I know. <laughs> I mean, like everything I heard from, you know, when, when D'Antoni came out multiple years later, when Amari came out multiple years later, like in the moment, I didn't know any of that stuff. I didn't know what was happening. On March 24th, Lynn would complain about knee pain following a win against Detroit. And after an MRI, it was revealed that Jeremy had a small tear in his meniscus, an injury that would end his season. In the summer following Lynn's breakout season, Jeremy was an unrestricted free agent with the option to either sign a deal with the Knicks to return or take a bigger contract elsewhere. There were still plenty of questions about if Lynn could continue playing at the level he had shown in New York. And when the Houston Rockets laid a four year $28 million deal on the table that summer, the Knicks were left with a decision to make. I thought the Knicks were gonna match me. Um, they told me they were gonna match me. I just assumed it like I didn't understand what was happening and uh, and I still don't know to this day exactly what happened. At first, New York made it clear they wanted to bring Jeremy back, saying they would quote match any contract up to one billion dollars. Wow. Wow. What happened to that? However, when the Rockets doubled back with a counteroffer of three years, $25 million, which included a gut-punching $14 million set to be paid out in the third year, Knicks star Carmelo Anthony would go on record calling the contract ridiculous. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. It's not up to me, Anthony said while laughing. It's up to the organization to say they want to match that ridiculous contract that's out there. That sucks, man. That guy is still your teammate at that point. Shoot, Mello. A lot of people try, you know, kind of jump the gun with, with that. He's going to be back no matter what. Uh, at the end of the day, he was, you know, a free agent, so he was testing the market. Um, you know, Houston threw a big deal out there on the table. So I really don't know. I haven't talked to anybody in the Knicks organization as far as, you know, what was going to happen. While New York had been no stranger to overpaying for players, <laughs> in this case, they didn't find the deal worth it, electing to let Lynn walk. Despite the surge he had given the franchise just a few months prior, Jeremy Lin's career after leaving the Knicks was filled with ups and downs. There were rocky stints in Houston and LA, which were filled with Lin chasing the expectations that followed him post Lin sanity. By the time he arrived in Charlotte in 2015, Jeremy had begun to come into his own as a player finishing in the running for sixth man of the year as he provided a much needed spark off the bench for the Hornets. Lynn, that's a three. Stop! Jeremy Lynn from long range. Despite an injury riddled season in Brooklyn the following year, Jeremy would actually be given some of the primary scoring responsibility for the Nets, putting up his best numbers. Oh, he just stole it from Mello. Professional. Lynn was primed to be a focal point of the offense in Brooklyn entering the 2017 season, but a torn ACL in game one would mark the downfall of his NBA career. Ah, oh, man, that always hurts to watch this one. Like, at least he didn't have the audio on, so you can't hear him say it. But, man, he knows he was done. 
Like at that moment, he knows like he he really messed something up really bad in his leg. He was he was panicking. Shoot. While this was the end of his opportunity to be a major contributor for a franchise, in 2019, Lynn would end his time in the NBA on a high note, becoming the first Asian American to win the NBA championship as a member of the Toronto Raptors. I forgot he was part of that lineup. Lynn, you got a ring. That's pretty cool. You had a goal. One of those goals was to make it into the NBA, start as a point guard, and then you're going to win a championship. Way to call it. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been an incredible journey, and I'm having fun along the way. So, uh, you know, definitely giving all the credit to God, just knowing that there's so many things I feel like I couldn't control, but to be able to achieve all those things and to be able to, have, you know, experience that, just super thankful. Since his time in the NBA, Lin has created a new legacy for himself in both China and Taiwan, where he's played since 2020. Today, he doesn't find himself in the American mainstream media quite as much, but Jeremy has still spent the past few years speaking on Lin's sanity and how it affected both his life and his career. As we look back at that time ourselves, it's easy to ask the question, where did it all fall apart back in 2012? Could it have been the fault of the Miami Heat, who delivered the initial blow during their revenge tour that season? Was it the loss of Coach D'Antoni, whose system was responsible for giving Lynn the tools he needed to shine? Yes and yes. Was it the jealousy of yes. teammates, or simply injuries? The list could go on forever. Yeah, it was all of it. Like any good mystery, it's up to us to sift through the clues and make our own judgment. Personally, I think it was a perfect storm of all of the above, mm. which came together to end one of the most memorable sports events in my lifetime. Under a spotlight that was hotter than any, Jeremy Lin took the world by storm for those two weeks. And despite how it ended, he lived out a dream that not only sparked an NBA career for himself, but also inspired millions across the globe. So what killed Lin Sanity? I don't know that we'll ever truly get that answer. But what I do know is that time period gave us memories that will last a lifetime. Yeah, for sure. That was and fun. And I'm thankful I got to witness it. Me too. Man, good video. Good video again by Trice. Really digging this channel. Uh, go check out Trice if you enjoyed this or if you enjoyed last night's video. Uh, shout out to Trice, man. Well done. Very, very well done. Um... Yeah, I think it's a combination of everything that that caused insanity to end. But while this video, this ending was playing, I, I, I was running a thought through my head because I was thinking, was insanity a curse for him? And it's so complicated. I, I, I can't give a, a true straight answer. I have to approach it from both sides because, OK, him going through insanity created on a cheat like unsustainable expectations for the rest of his career. Everyone will always associate Jeremy Lin with that Jeremy Lin, that, that godlike, magical, fairy tale Jeremy Lin from those couple of weeks where he just dominated the whole world. How, so that sucks because you can't just be an average player anymore and just, you know, just kind of skate by and just contribute to a team. Everyone's expecting this guy. However, so I could say that part's bad, but then, however, at the time when Linsanity happened, he was kind of nobody in the league. So he could have, if, if the Linsanity thing didn't happen, he could have easily been waved off the team and just cut. And who knows if he would have got another opportunity. So this way he did get to, get to play out a nice, uh, reason, reasonably long NBA career, got to win a championship, it turns out. 
he got to live all of that fame. It's just that it didn't last very long. I still think he benefited from the whole insanity craze, um, especially financially. But it's hard to say. It's hard to say if he could have just, you know, slowly but surely stayed in the NBA and progressed his skills up and up and up. I we don't know what that would have looked like. We don't know, or if he would have even gotten that opportunity. But anyways, that's Jeremy Lin for everybody. Um, I always say the Tim Tebow of the NBA, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. I enjoyed this one tonight. I hope you guys did too. Leave the video a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you want more. If you do, I'll see you tomorrow. And um, yeah, everybody, peace out, be safe, and have a wonderful night, okay? All right. Good night, everybody.